scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Shibaka Subrakata. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's read it together. One, two, read. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. The apostle is speaking now. He's saying part of my apostolic assignment is that every once and again, I, as a system of mentorship, remind you of the truths that you probably may have known. Some may be on their way understanding it. Some would have held it to a measure. But he said, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. It was Dr. Mike Murdoch that said, repetition is what creates persuasion. That means the more a thought and a truthful information is repeated eventually your mind will embrace it as true and your life will show the results are we together so um, I will title this keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom you can put in bracket revision series the keys of the kingdom it's a revision series this is part one next week we'll look at part two the goal is to bring to our understanding. It's like a refresher course. Praise the Lord. This week and next week, by the grace of God, I'm going to be dealing with the matters of the kingdom, the factors, the laws of the spirit, the truths that we have so labored through the years to teach and continue to teach that are responsible for power, for grace, for relevance for a life of meaning impact and so on and so forth are we together the keys of the kingdom the revision series matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 lord we receive understanding matthew 16 and verse 19 read with me is projected everyone inside and outside one two go and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven uh-huh and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven let's look at amplified the king james version here does not do the kind of justice that we seek um it doesn't give you the kind of expression that that will help you understand let's read it now and then i begin to teach one to read and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. And whatsoever you bind, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose, declare lawful on earth, must be what is already loosed in heaven. Thank you, Father, for understanding. Let us grow. Let us rise. In the name of Jesus, let us become living wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus is speaking here and he's making a very interesting statement. Please pay attention. Remember, I told us that Jesus raised disciples who would later become apostles through a system of discipleship that we call mentorship. And the way he started, very interesting, from Matthew chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, when he was done with his temptation, he departed in the power of the Spirit. Right from Matthew chapter 5 until he resurrected. Every day was a Bible study session. Every day was a prayer session. Every day was a mentorship session. They were exact spiritual truth that he was teaching them. He was teaching them on the kingdom, reorganizing their understanding about various aspects of the kingdom life. He brought many prophecies to lamb light and began to shed light on them. He brought many perspectives, misrepresentations about the God of the Hebrews that they had known and began to correct them. Then he used parables, parables to explain what he called the mysteries of the kingdom. Are we together? And so when we get to the 16th chapter of Matthew, he's now talking about the keys. Now, theologically speaking, there is only one key to the kingdom. Everybody say to the kingdom. There is only one key to the kingdom. And that key happens to be the door himself. Jesus said it this way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh to the Father except by or through me. So we know that there is only one key to the kingdom. There are not many ways. Almost all of the founders of different religions around the world, out of the three to 5,000 religions we have currently and growing in the world, all of the founders propose to be the keys of the kingdom. That means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life, civilization, consciousness, or reality. Are we together? We have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of God. But Jesus came and made a bold statement that he was and still remains the only authorized access. So there is only one key to the kingdom. The Bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Do you know why I'm teaching you this? Look up, please. Look up. The time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound. We must be theologically sound. The context of our spiritual communication must be balanced, must be intelligent, must be theologically sound. You must be able to make full proof of your ministry, defending the faith, by understanding what you believe not just believing blindly are we together the days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking out time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 it says that um the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the lord jesus thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead it says you shall be saved are we together yes then it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation 
so this is the technology that god employed so when you follow that door who is christ the bible calls him the new and the living way he becomes the only access point if you have not passed through that door you are not saved are we together it doesn't matter how you are around church you are not saved nicodemus came to jesus by night and said rabbi john 3 thou art a man we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him then in verse 3 jesus is teaching now and he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he's talking about being born again now he shall not see the kingdom of god are we together and then except a man be born of water verse 5 now and the spirit he shall not enter the kingdom so we know there is one key and only key to the kingdom but there when you get into the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom not a key the the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom there are many the laws of the kingdom the methodologies of the kingdom you need access to just one key jesus the son of the living god the new and living way but when you come into the kingdom listen carefully you need to know that there are keys of the kingdom say keys of the kingdom and the sequence is this watch this a believers come you stand here face me please my friend please come stand here face me no you stand here are we together my dear come now watch this they represent different levels this gentleman for instance is the one the bible calls a natural man everybody say natural man that means one who is alienated from the life of god he is not yet a partaker of the life of god through the new birth experience that we call salvation is someone learning you have to understand what i'm teaching you the first ministry that this man needs is not a preacher's ministry the first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the bible calls the goodness of god listen very carefully the bible says it is the goodness of god that leads men to repentance so there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of god that this man needs to have and that dimension is sponsored by the holy spirit so the holy spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need see the need for jesus in his life john 16 jesus still in his mentorship session began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the holy spirit jesus started by saying i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it listen carefully that when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth are we together he shall take of what is mine and shall give to you then the bible says that the holy spirit has a threefold ministry to the world the world of natural men he says he will convict you of three things number one of sin say sin number two of righteousness say righteousness number three of judgment are we together so it is the ministry of the holy spirit to bring this man to a point now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the bible says how shall they hear except they be a preacher are we together are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom except they be a preacher so god depends on men to allow the ministry of the holy spirit to find expression now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the lord coming and listen it is not any preaching that saves understand this it is not any preaching that saves there is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation new birth now all truth in the bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring listen to me but there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person 
are, are you following now this is a refresher course we are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective now it is true that i can teach any message and raise an altar call but that even if it is in one minute there has to be a way of routing that altar call such that the content are located to be captured for salvation is represented there are we together the gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation everybody shout say the gospel of salvation now there are many gospels in the bible by many gospels we don't mean erroneous gospels the word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with jesus as it were it's just a proclamation of glad tidings the word gospel means good news are we together a proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart that's what is called gospel so there is the gospel of salvation and the gospel of salvation is a message everybody say a message the gospel of salvation is the revelation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love are we together manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ and the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation the death of jesus does not only affect men it affects creation are we together so the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son jesus to man first and then creation and then man's response everybody say response man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that god is now personified in the christ so you can look at jesus to know who god is jesus came as the will the thoughts of god the word word of god is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so jesus came to reveal to men the image of the invisible god as a commitment and a desire to help men know god number two jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so jesus came as the bridge 
but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that sinneth it shall die it's a law that any soul that sins the penalty is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood i'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible god number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to god and he needed to route it through abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true that jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the christ are we together not like that of the christ when you receive that report the bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare jesus as savior and lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful abraham i hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was abraham our father the gospel was preached to abraham in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed abraham believed god and it was credited to him and that formula of abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness people like kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation and without a sense of inferiority this is what he calls righteousness i will want to add that more than that righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the christ in a man it's more than just an act the manifestation of the nature of christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the lord now number three we are given the holy spirit according to galatians chapter 3 christ has redeemed us from the cause of the lord the bible says being made a cause for us for it is written 
in the law of Moses that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles what is the blessing of Abraham I've taught it here justification by faith the blessing of Abraham is not a pronouncement no there are blessings of Abraham there is the blessing and there is the blessing of Abraham three of them are not the same the blessing of Abraham is the justification that comes by faith the blessings of Abraham are the speakings that came upon Abraham as an inheritance by God that we can route through the promise the blessing is the Holy Spirit are we together so the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the Gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith so we receive the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God he is the one we call Zoe now listen very carefully the word eternal life is not something the Holy Spirit brings it is his presence in us the Holy Spirit does not bring eternal life the Holy Spirit is the life of God he is what we call Zoe is what we call the blessing are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the Holy Spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of God acknowledges Christ as his Savior and Lord and according to the authority of scripture the bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the lordship of christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom jesus christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man the bible calls them carnal men the word carnal means sensual they have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit he's not a natural man but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience are we together now many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church you can be called a deacon from a deacon you move to a pastor and then to whatever now humanly speaking you are making advancement but spiritually speaking you are still here are we together now watch this it is for this man that Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given that he gave unto some apostles listen now the fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers why to do the work of the ministry i mean for the perfecting or the equipping the maturing it is called of the saints so that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry are we together so the holy spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the word of god without the ministry of the holy spirit will turn this man to a religious man he will receive the knowledge that puffs up ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth the bible says for from such depart are you following me tonight so this gentleman gets born again the the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious um religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination 
but God's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship is the reason why after many years of mentorship the people don't look like Christ they look like the error are you getting what I'm saying now yes the Bible says looking up to Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith he started it he should end it so this gentleman is planted in a ministry like koinonia are we together now he has an assignment his assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow that growth is a possibility in the kingdom luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men this guy is saved but he needs to grow if he does not grow then Galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy. Are we together? He says, This I say then, an heir, for as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave, although he be lord of all, but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So an heir, provided he remains a child, bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth, that he does not differ from a slave. This gentleman's next part of call, is to grow everybody say growth the growth is threefold number one the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars the foundational pillars of the christian faith are taught him i'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow the foundational pillars the Bible begins to tell us in, in Hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines, let us move further to more superior things, paraphrasing. And he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that. There are basic foundational pillars of the Christian faith. Please look up. If this guy receives the best of mentorship, he should be introduced, number one, to the value of the word of God in the life of the believer this is key it's not something he should learn later he should learn that in this kingdom the boundaries of God's commitment to us is scripture he must learn that the primary way of knowing God is scripture all scripture were inspired by the Holy Ghost profitable for reproof for doctrine for correction that the man of God may be mature, fruitful in every good work. Are we together? So this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of God. Number two, this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer. The priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry. By priesthood, he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you to legislate in this kingdom. When this man is not taught prayer early, it will affect him. Are you seeing the sequence of growth? Number three, this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship. And community life as a system for preserving kingdom values i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity are we together it is like the oil that comes upon the head of aaron down to his bird to his skirt his garment he said there the lord had commanded the blessing this man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship number four this man must be introduced to an understanding of his identity in christ it matters for this man to know who he has now become in christ 
the bible says in galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise there are many things that the bible calls the believer for instance it says behold what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of god is a name he must know number two the bible tells us that we have been raised up together with christ are we together he must understand that fact number three he must know now that he has become a partaker of the spirit whereby we cry abba father that this man has access to god according to hebrews he says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need this man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now he has access to fellowship he should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth he must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him the next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in christ it's a foundational understanding it's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married no the bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel he must know that he was born for a reason are we together when this gentleman you are, this guy is stooping down to respect me his back will pain him oh stand, stand straight eh? he respects me and he's leaning like this god bless you for your honor that's how the world will bow before you eh? now watch this but, but you can you can stand you have you have tried let's 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 be fair on the gentleman praise the lord now do you know that when this guy now understands these things they are very strong pillars now he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom are we together what we call the mysteries of the kingdom he will now begin to understand the methodologies the ways of god he now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom he now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires already remember that the foundation of his life is god remember that he knows who he is in christ because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life and if he's not told who he is in christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, ah you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes do you know that this gentleman having completed this realm will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of god now i begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom that there is a mystery that connects longevity there is a mystery that connects exemption how favor works how giving works how the relationship with the holy spirit is built how the anointing grows the necessity for this this guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows now this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man with proper mentorship he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature his convictions are strong he's not only believing because a pastor said a prophet said an apostle said he has come into an a, a conviction about god watch this when he gets to this level the next assignment is for him 
to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war that you are not only in the spirit to grow alone are we together now that is time for you to mature and now become useful this is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance what it means to become an ambassador what it means to be mightily used by god it is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence this man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the holy spirit you see this is how he started as a naive confused christian not knowing his left from his right and with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship look what he has become a mighty battle axe now look at this why are many believers in church for many years the average church has two to three services per week and after many years the believer is still here fighting for appointment fighting for deaconry fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why because he's a baby he's broke and he fetches from church offering and says i will return it later he's a baby he has not seen the value and the excellence of service this guy is persecuted and he says god why me these are the languages of babes he says strong meter for them who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses unto godliness if i turn to god today and say why me is is an embarrassment um is, is, is an embarrassment to his investment in my life not at this level the difference between this man and this woman is that at this level you should have gained mastery the things of the kingdom you should not be learning how to walk at this level when you see someone who is you don't put babies on wheelchair but if an adult cannot walk, you put him on wheelchair. Nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and say, I said you should walk and you are not walking. Nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and say, rise up and walk. It is, it is allowed in that realm. But when you become an adult and you cannot walk, it's an attack. Listen, there are, when people say they are matured as believers, ask them what makes you think you are mature say i'm not a baby christian at all i'm not why what makes you believe say i've suffered in this life no that's not the reason why you are you are a mature christian not at all it is true that the furnace don't get me wrong please understand this it is true that the furnace of affliction can refine but suffering is not the reason why you are a mature christian you may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for this person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat this person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge listen if i come and say pastor i'm in trouble like an encyclopedia should just open which mystery is allocated to solve this man's problem this is the justification for being spiritual when you talk to this person and say um you know the way life is you are supposed to be here not here this person should have at this point had a covenant with god or be connected to strong covenants that even where his or her personal faith fails there should still be a way of routing results otherwise who brought you here who qualified you here are you seeing that a lot of baby christians continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch 
Benny Hinn is throwing people, me too, I'm throwing people, we are the same. Whoever told you? Please understand what I'm teaching you. This is a refresher series that many believers do not understand. So the Bible says, I will give you pastors after my heart. Men of God, hear me. You have an assignment to build people sequentially. You must know what they are to become. Not hope that you are doing the right thing. Like an architect, when an architect is building, he does not sit down hoping that I hope the building is coming well. He has the master plan already. He's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand. At this level, there is something you can tell God that will make God act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have. It is one Lord reach unto all. But my brothers and my sisters, something you have done, a process of growth has brought you to this point. There is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with God. You cannot fear their fears. No, you cannot. If me and this guy pray, he's going to be frustrated. We can pray a general church prayer. But if he comes to the secret place to pray with me, this guy is going to be tired. He's going to pray from his realm. And he will hear me talk to God in a way that does not make sense. It may not even sound scriptural, but it is. There is a level, I will call God names he has not had anywhere. It's a name that my experience gave God. He can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist and say, sir, let's pray. I said, that's what I'm doing. And he said, I, I thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling. And I say, yes. Just do what you are taught. You are correct. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. You satisfy my soul. Sing it one more time. Yeah. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. listen don't worry you can stand back this is already a refresher course many of us are born again but I tell you why our lives are unfruitful I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong as serious as you are praying I will tell you the part that will be answered and the part that will not be answered I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer now at this point God will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer but the zeal of your prayer so he will allow the error just pass there's no need for accuracy he's cultivating zeal you can pray and make mistakes the goal is that you become prayerful the realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future so you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense but the more you pray the more God is backing it. The idea, it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. When you are corrected here, you will be discouraged. When you get here, you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth. You were never supposed to pray for them. Growth already answered that prayer request. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul, satisfy my soul. Please sit down. Sit down. There are many people parading themselves as matured Christians. You say, why? You say, I've been born again for 10 years. What does that mean? What does that mean? It is true that longevity 
if well utilized that's time and if you invested in it spiritually the bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting but he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption you can sow to the flesh for many years it does not mean you reap life are we together this thing i told you is the basic foundation of any believers christian life if you do not know this you will leave god eventually something about the absence now imagine that where, where are you come imagine that this guy just got born again and the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity this guy is going to fail woefully do you know why because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man the flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you the message will fall on lust that is already there and it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person so there is a sequence of growth not every topic is relevant to every believer imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love and and life partner and relationship do you know what is going to happen to this guy he's already dead even before the series on relationship is over because i can tell you this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere this guy's life is not going anywhere the awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not you think he will pray the way you are praying that you are praying like a madman not when you are aware lady is looking at you no how what if i I, I miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is God he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues and what they were taught corrupted their passion that reckless abandonment let me tell you those days when we started ministry here you would see the ladies including hot cc ladies when it's time to pray they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other they will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia rumpled to pieces. It matters how we are taught. It matters who, who defines your spiritual value. Who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God. The keys of the kingdom now i said that because it was important to lay this foundation but in this refresher series my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics now i want to refresh and show us again and i'm praying in the name of jesus christ remember it's this week and next week i'm praying that what you did not see before may you see it now how do i know i have caught light the results the results show that the light has come if the results cannot show with time then the light never came how do I know how can I trust the content of the information I have one of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie that I should not believe something I hold true and find out after many years that I've been wasting my time believing in a lie. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today that is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. There is a, an exact body of knowledge are located for the truths that you desire and I'm going to run through them this week and next week can you lay hands on your head and command 
that in the name of Jesus your understanding is fruitful lift your voice and pray please pray speak to my mind be open hallelujah now matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 let's go back please and let's deal with these issues now sincerely it's my prayer in the name of jesus christ that we'll hold these keys and we will rise in a way and manner the mysteries of the kingdom demystify life they bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks and i will give you the keys of the kingdom say i receive it and whatsoever you bind the word bind there should not confuse you declare to be improper a particular version says disallow and then it talks about allowing now watch this notice the sequence according to amplify that it is what has been bound in heaven you replicate it in the earth and what has been allowed in heaven you replicate it so the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven remember the sequences that it be done in the earth as it is in heaven it is not going to be done in heaven as it is done in the earth so realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth the keys of the kingdom still amplified psalm 82 let's start from verse 5 still amplified very powerful rendition it says they know not amplified amplified keep amplified there please it says the magistrate and the judges know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction and all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking six i said you are god since you judge on my behalf as my representatives indeed all of you are children of the most high verse seven let's shout it together one to go but you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes so the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority access to spiritual truth access to information illumination these are the keys that make for dominion so the bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies and there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies when you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm. These are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand, I'm teaching now. They are the keys that activate. There are possibilities, but they must be activated through knowledge. And there are possibilities that can be deactivated. For instance, premature death is a possibility. It can be deactivated like you detonate a bomb are we together long life is a possibility but it's activated delay is a possibility activated speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys that means i give you access to, I, I will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind. Choose the ones to activate 
and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into Christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no I off this I off this delaying destiny I off this mediocrity I off this I put on the switch of speed I put on the switch of the anointing why am I a pastor with no members I deactivated he said I give you the keys of the kingdom please listen very carefully please sit down you will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so but you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of God and you are shown the key to bring it down and suddenly your life changes and they say are you not someone who is associated with this territory you say no more the keys and I will give you the keys of the kingdom listen the Bible says speaking to Abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes and see that means from where you are you can go anywhere but there is a key that takes you there you don't need to go somewhere else from where you are your location your territory notwithstanding you can rise from there please pay attention because what I show you will disarm principalities and powers what I show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess. People will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already. You are, you are standing with stability. You are not afraid of your results. They came by light. Let me tell you this. Any dimension you step into, not by understanding, you will be afraid of the results because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there a car comes to you and you are afraid what if it spoils will another one come but there is a body of knowledge that when you know it gives you stability if god says give the car you will give it number one out of faith but number two out of understanding of not just god alone the economy of the system has been opened to you The major assignment of a believer is growth. The major assignment of a believer is enlightenment. Being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded. See, there are things when you tell me today, it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about. No. Like the future of the ministry, like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years, the ministry will be standing strong. You see, fear truly comes because of ignorance there are things i've found in my life like gems and i pray i pray i pray i pray dear ones in the name of jesus christ that the spirit that enlightens brings light may that grace open you up to light in the mighty name of jesus christ See, let me tell you, when you talk, there will be mockers. There will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power. These are keys. They are not suggestions. They are keys. They are backed up by God's integrity. They are not backed up by a professor, a governor, a president, a monarch. This is God we are talking about here.
please sit down. I feel sad and respectfully speaking, I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light. He has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy. I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance. There are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it. It's not an individual. Listen, you are hearing the things that you are hearing. Blessed are your ears, Revelation says, for they hear these things. The truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to Jacob and is coming for the sake of Israel. When God wants to visit Israel, he finds Jacob and sends a word to Jacob and it lightens upon Israel. Thou will show me the path of light. For in your light, we see light. Who can claim to see when God has not shown you light? What are you seeing? Job 29 and verse 3. Job 29 and verse 3. Please let's hurry up. Let's work together media. Job 29 and verse 3. Job is speaking now. When his candle did what? Shined upon where? My head. Not upon my feet. The first assignment of the light of God is not your feet. It's to shine upon your head. To take away that darkness. That vagueness. That assumption. It may be an age-old age old assumption, but it's still an assumption. A popular assumption is still an assumption. And then he says, and by his light, I walk through darkness. That a man can find his way out of light. And you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder. Not that you walk miracles, you are one yourself. A living miracle. Your life is a message whether you are preaching or not. This is what God is making you become. And listen to me. You don't become it just by wish. You are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge. Understand my choice of words. Not every spiritual information makes men. There must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life. When you learn this, let me see the power, let me see the cause, let me see the yoke, let me see the enchantment, let me see the divination, let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down. It no longer exists. You will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination. It is true that when the light shines in darkness, truly the darkness does not comprehend it. Where we are right now, we have to admit, is a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire. Please hear me. I'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride. You hear people prophesy, I did this, I did this, and favor came. And for me, it's not the testimony. Do you know what you did? And can you do it? Any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result. You can stumble into results. But sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge. Apostle, you don't understand my situation, that's why. If you were my shoes, no sir. I respect your pain, but I admit to you, your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness. Let light come and you will watch what happens. Because every desire that we have, there is an allocation, an allocation of it based on the word of God. And if it is not captured in my life, I must admit that there is something I do not know. 
the earlier you admit that there's something you did not know the better for you quickly don't wait till you fail for a long time the moment you start failing stop 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 immediately and say i'm not continuing until i'm sure of what i'm doing that way you will redeem time many people fail for many years they are humbled by life before they have to come back and say okay i didn't get it let me get it now you will thank me for the truths that i share with you you will thank me for the truths that i show you hallelujah now let's explore some keys of the kingdom number one there's part one and there's part two the first key is found in genesis chapter one verse one everybody read the first four words please shout it as loud as you can first four words one two read one more time one more time one more time last time now this is the first law when God does not begin a thing, it has failed. In the beginning of anything, it's not knowledge. In the beginning of anything, it's not skill. In the beginning of anything, it's not connection. In the beginning of anything, it's God. I am Alpha, Omega. Don't call me to join something you started. If I do not begin it, my commitment is not there. I show you a powerful secret. In the beginning of your business, God. In the beginning of your marriage, God. In the beginning of your exploits. In the beginning of ministry. This is a secret that has changed my life. Anything God does not start, He will not back. He has to start it as Alpha. Because when he starts it, you will use his methods. You will not use your method and call on him to back it later. Our proud world today thinks God is only useful for spiritual life. When they want to do business, they take God out. When they want to do ministry, they take God out. Love and relationship, they take God out. Everything, they take God out. But I show you the first four words. Keep it there, please, media. This is the first spiritual law that I want to show you tonight. In the beginning of my life, God. In the beginning of my ministry, not passion, not desire, not assignment consciousness, God. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. I don't see myself. I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Let's sit down. In the beginning of my marriage or my desire to marry, beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho handsome guy with a job with nmpc you will pay for it eventually in the beginning of my business intelligence and a well accredited mentorship you are you have failed already the first secret to excelling in life is for god to not be a participant but the alpha of all that you do don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself. You organized it. You chose your life partner. You chose how many children you will give birth to and you say, God, come and bless it. No, God does not work like that. 
you started your business you chose your location by yourself you even bought the first consignment as soon as it arrived nigeria say lord here it is it's yours it's not his own you started your ministry decided where the church will start you already ordained pastors you called members you called everybody and you say lord behold your 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 assembly no sir the great know the secret to lifting they don't move Moses said do not send us away from here we cannot start this journey oh, if your presence will not go with us we are wasting our time he didn't say if our weapons don't go with us he didn't say if our gold a man that had gold had weapons yet he's saying these things are mundane God if you will not go with me please don't send me how shall they know that we're people that are separated and God says, you got it. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The Bible says, for with God, all things, for with God. Not for when you are moving and you say, okay, God, why are you leaving me? Oh, yeah, now come and hurry up and join. And then you say, God, come. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Lord, where are you? If you will not lead, I'm not going. I'm not going. Lord, if you will not lead me in ministry, I'm not going. Is it not written in your Bible that if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want? No. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, I am the vine. Don't be confused. We are together, but you are the branches. You are not the vine. I am the vine. You are connected to me, but you are the branch. He distributes it very clearly. Our dominion is shared dominion. Not dominion that is derived by our own strength. It's a secret that I've worked with in my life. My brothers and my sisters, I have no business going where God is not going. It is not my concern at all. The pressures of life will push you to many things things and places where God is not there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death what looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it when we're about to start this ministry haven't done everything by the spirit three days before koinonia would start we had done crusades we had been in ministry for a while but before koinonia will start i still went back for a retreat god please one more time are you the one speaking and are you still leading i tell you the truth if god said no that would be the end of it he must lead the way when he leads the way you will follow now thanks be to god who causes us like a blind man how many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately it's not because he can see he's following a man who can see and the man will lead him many people do not know this dimension of god we start things by emotion and then we ask god to join when things begin to backfire and god says no 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 you're on your own start with god in your life and watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder no matter how bad it looks if God says I am there go 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 I remember years ago the things that we now walk in God said so and I said Lord if you lead we are going home. and look what God has done and look what he continues to do in the beginning God please return to the place of prioritizing God don't use God let him lead the way many of us only say yes to God if we said yes to it already you just say God just help me confirm no you must be flexible Lord is this ministry your will I've been in it for 10 years but talk to me now if it is not you I'm closing it this night many of us our ego will not allow us to be that obedient is god speaking to us in the beginning god let god start your life so whatever happens 
you can say God please I'm here if God directs you and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren two years three years you have a legal right to go to God with your wife stand with God and say Lord you are the one that joined us all we came to you you gave us the right to choose but we returned it to you and we say we don't trust ourselves guide our decision and you guided us now the devil is bringing barrenness you put pressure on his integrity and he will have to arise if you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and I say pick the bike and come and meet me you told me already you don't have money but I said you should come by the time you come and you cannot pay the bike who will pay for it I ask you to come I must take responsibility for your obedience you will always be afraid to go to God when he did not start with you what will you go and tell God now of course his mess is there but you cannot stand now and say oh God this wife you gave me mm -mm, mm -mm. you were at the beer parlor under the heavy and then on that day you drank unusually and it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness you made a destiny decision and now you have to pay for it of course God is a merciful God and he can restore but the truth is before the restoration comes you'll be paying for it until the word of the Lord came the word tried him look at me please don't be too big to allow God start don't feel my ego is there I'm too intelligent let church not not make me a dull person I'm intelligent I went to school not destiny not destiny you must learn to step back and say oh God of heaven I declare before you sincerely there is nothing that I know moves God like a broken and a contrite heart let God find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite he will veto whatever is wrong and come a broken heart is a real invitation for his presence are we together let me give us one more ah, there are keys so oh. the keys are many you hold them and hang them like a chain a chain of royalty a royal diadem and you move through life you stand by this door you remove one key you open it there are doors you don't just open you break the door so that others can pass too because you can pass and the door will be locked he has broken the gates of brass not opened it broken it and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that others can pass Will I pass a door and my child will not pass? Number two. Are, are you understanding what I'm teaching you? Please use this. Please use this. God told me something years ago and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. In other words, if like John, you agree to decrease. John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up, you will fall. But if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. When they bow down to Jesus, they also bow down to the donkey that was carrying him. When they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk, his feet never touched the palm, but it was the donkey that carried him. Who told you when you carry Jesus, you fail? It's an honor to let the world see him. Is something I've learned in ministry. Is something I've learned in my life. Sincerely, my desire, I tell you, 
it's not for fame it's not for power it's not for money I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation to show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord it pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime and I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men I was standing somewhere no food no water they were crying that whole generation and I came to them I said why they said you are the reason and I was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me and I made up my mind that I will go if I perish I perish as soon as I stepped out I saw a giant man and he held my hands he said let's go for you to be lifted all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all I want is for When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point, the celebrity obsession dies at once. I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure. It's totally unnecessary. Provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God. I tell you why God does not use many people. It's not because they don't pray. It's not because they don't fast. It's not because they are not holy. Because the corruption in their heart, the dimension of obsession for fame, and the, some of you, as you are looking at me like this, if, if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny, God will not hear you again. Everybody must bow down to you. Everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you. And you will keep the person there for everybody to see. Before you say, now you can stand up, my, my dear son. All this pride that continues to kill men. I tell you why many people do not rise. There are some of us, we have it hidden. Some of us are boastful and outspoken about it. Others are quiet, but it's still there. Waiting for something to bring it out. That, that, that appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, God. If nobody ever sees me today, and all they see is God and his mighty works, sincerely I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you I am satisfied. I am. The things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry, I stand and I bless him for it. But let me tell you this. You ask God, he will tell you. I have no business trying to search for fame, apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Thank God for all of those things. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm wise enough to know that without him, I can do nothing. Get to that point in your life where everything about God is your obsession. Don't use God to get fame. Listen, let me tell you, many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten? How much? You have just gotten trouble all around. When God swears over you, to lift you let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer it will crush you when God vows upon a man listen if you can make this vow this night and say Lord I give up this search for to be known now sometimes it's not demonic it's because of our background we came from backgrounds where and some of us our cultures you derive respect from the money the Jeep the car, the house, the moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. Thank God for culture, but please be born again. Please be born again. 
Don't just be saved. Be born again. Subscribe to another culture. Let me tell you this. When you hide behind the cross, that is the way the whole world sees you. The secret to your being seen is his being seen. When they see Jesus, they have to see you. My life is a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, hear what I teach you and be wise and rise from this mediocrity in life. It does not start with just intellect. There is a place for all these things. But don't forget these first four words that start your Bible. In the beginning, God. Not in the middle, then God comes. <clears throat> in the beginning, God. This is how I run my life. It is God. Oh. Everything I have belongs to Him. You never hear me say, you only hear me say my thing just in terms of responsibility. But God knows. If He started the beginning, then anything I find there is His own before I came. My house is His own. My cars, His own. The influence, His own. The fame, His own. The anointing, His own. I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation. It's not Rema. It's not miracles. You can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows. You can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you. Let all the other names fade away. Let that be your prayer. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Every other name fade away. Listen down. Let's start the second. The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time, but please get it now. Success is not pursued. Success is not pursued. Success is not what you look for. You will never find it. Success was designed to come just like fate. Just like fate, comet. You don't pursue faith. Uh -uh. You don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. Are we together? Now, please look up. Let me teach. Um, come, gentlemen. Let me have six or eight gentlemen. Sit down, Pastor Alfon. Sit down. Please come. Sit down. You come quickly so that we we'll save time. Just stand this way. Stand facing me. Space yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. And you stand. 
um, my friend you stand here watch this everybody thank you now please watch this call all of these people the needs of men say the needs of men one more time please shout it say the needs of men call sam is looking sharp call this financial prosperity you are all looking sharp eh? my dear people you are all looking sharp now watch this call this financial prosperity that's what you are looking for are we together call this marital peace oh how we need it marital peace are we together call this influence and fame we need it too social media world we need it a lot likes and follows call this speed are we together call this what do you call this favor ah koinonia favor favor and then call this impact now watch this this is me help me starting out my life with zero possibilities zero possibilities now watch this did you know how frustrating it would be for me ladies and gentlemen to start pursuing these things one by one these six only represent the uncountable needs that represent success to men and we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them that burden is too much an intelligent god will not design success that way are we together now so when you pursue success it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth you spend 30 years seeking no money is even a lifetime you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband another how many years seeking all of these things your lifetime together will not allow you get them this is the cause of the fallen man to seek things one by one jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things he says the gentiles run after these things they run after they run after but your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it now watch this this is how god designed the kingdom i pray for you that you will get this once and for all now watch this at this level notice my prayer I'm a prayer warrior. Oh God, open the windows of heaven. Finances, give me finance. Oh God, a good wife, good children. I will never give birth to an armed robber. I won't give birth to a thief. At this level, your prayer is valid. Because there are many things you do not know. Father, grant me favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant me fame. Grant me speed. And I'm praying. And sometimes I'm tempted to leave God to quickly get them. Now watch this. All these guys represent levels. Everybody say levels. They represent dimensions. Say dimensions. For every level I get to, designed by God, are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level. So human beings are inversions. Are we together now? There is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire. No. It is God's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire. It's not an attack. If I pray to be a millionaire, God will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated. Please understand what I'm teaching you. Now, the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to what are you called impacts now i'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride and yet i want to make benny Hinn's impact and i borrowed the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring what happens it will leave me again anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you it will leave as losses it will live as armed robbers it will live as thieves forget about the actors there is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law i show you the laws of the kingdom i show you the way we grow 
Now watch this. These guys are standing here. Now gentlemen, this is what I want you to do. For every step I take forward, you two take a step forward. Are, are we together? Now watch this. I am here and I was invited to come for Koinonia. A broke, confused, wearing my smelly cloth. All I know is God. And I have the, the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship. And now I am taught certain things. Watch this. As the word of God is shining upon my mind, I may not know what I'm doing, but I'm taking a step. And the things I'm looking for are also taking a step. Are you seeing that now? All at once. Or this is what will happen. Step back. When I step to your level, you step forward. Are we together? Now, watch this. I am here right now. And I move forward. And these guys come. Now, notice, without prayer, some results start coming. Because I grew there. Now, my eye is here. And it's good to look far. But it's not going to come to your life. Listen. Hold on. Let me teach you something. If Papa E.A. Adeboye today empties his account this night, before 12 noon, millions will come back. I will tell you why. It's not because there are givers. It's not because he's a man of God. When the money disappears, the law of God will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect. The justice system of God must balance that destiny. This is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago. That there is a system of balance in life. It is not a lie. Please understand this. Now watch this. I sit down here as a confused Christian and if I'm not properly mentored, I quickly come here and lie down on someone's BMW and just say it is mine. If you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this, you are right. But you mean you want it now. Even if they give you now, there is a system design that will take it from you. See, let me tell you, it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably. They have balloon success. They open up today and shrink back again. There were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago, 15 years ago. No, growth brought it. So I'm growing. Shaka bakatosia. Praying every day as I'm learning a key, as I'm sowing seeds, as I'm building. Look at what I'm doing. It's moving towards me. Moving towards me. Are you seeing that now? A time will come where everything that I see, come gentlemen, I will be immersed in my possibilities. I can no longer leave them. It will not make a difference again whether I give or don't give financially speaking. I've entered a realm of financial equilibrium. Where what goes and what comes, it doesn't make a difference. The only thing is just my faith with God. But at this level, when I give, I will know it. I will know something left me. Now watch this. Let me tell you what God is doing to you every week you are coming. You are right here. You may not know what is happening. Listen to me. Please, just be sensitive and pay attention. You may not know what it is that is happening to you. But this is the law of God. Man of God, don't sit back just admiring everybody. While you are praying, you are learning the principles. You are learning leadership. What you are doing is you are walking through life. What you are looking for is also looking for you. What you are looking for is also looking for you. A day will come by the Spirit of God. Hear me please. That day except God is not God. A day will always come. That includes the anointing. Watch this. Call these dimensions of the anointing. My brothers, you cannot stand at this level and want to operate in the anointing and the spirit at this level no matter what impartation all this double portion prayer of course is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people even the man of god knows it's not double portion that came on that person he just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place this is where benny Hinn started and he kept growing he kept growing he has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted 
and he would be tired from hours of personal ministration. But as he stepped up, he got to a level where his word became his hands. It can reach people and touch them. It doesn't matter where. Now watch this. At this level, the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard, clash the cymbal, charge everywhere, till there is prayer, till the people fast, till their hearts are open. He thinks that's how God operates until he comes higher. You get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing. He does not believe you. He even hates you, yet he's rising from a wheelchair. So what took him up? For every time you backslide, this is what happens. Every time you are offended and angry, I won't go to church again. I'm tired. This is what you are doing to yourself. Shifting you further. Sincerely, this thing I'm acting is how destiny works. Let me tell you this. Business people, hear me. If you believe that you will imaginarily stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just tumble into it, you are joking, it will leave you. It is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility. So the way we succeed is not what we do. It is who we become. There is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft. If I enter an aircraft, the aircraft will throw me out. Are we together? There is a version of me that should not have a car. If I want a car, I don't look for a car. I grow into the realm where a car was allocated. So when I'm here, watch this. In this realm as provided by God, there should be cars and there should be houses. If God says, so your car, and you give it, the realm itself will look for a replacement. It is God's system. There is a level that you stand, you will never have more than 500 members. It doesn't matter how many days you fast, you cannot have it. Your mind and your growth does not allow it. You can stand and be offended. The more you insult a man that has a crowd and say, what is crowd? This is what you are doing to your own results. You are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you. But when you stand and grow and say, Lord, what did you show them? As the light of God is shining upon your head, you are moving from obscurity, from mediocrity. Please understand what I teach you. This is how the great rise. That's why they are not afraid of their growth. They did not jump. They grew and Jesus increased. Listen, let me tell you this. Forget about poverty and forget about all of these things. I'm not saying don't pay attention to them. Do you know you will grow and not know when this realm, the possibilities there left you? Which tailor will sew my cloth? Oh, you go around looking for a tailor. You will die looking for a tailor. Just grow. The tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you. There is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you. Did Joseph look for the person who would put his garment? Was he not in the prison? The garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him. There are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth. Let me get a jeep. What is jeep, my brothers and my sisters? Don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life. When you know this, anybody that receives a miracle is like the hand of a clock rotating. You start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing. And you know that your turn is coming. See, let me tell you. Come. When you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say, we know that one day it will go down. This money will go down. The crowd, you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men. You are not here by luck. The justice of God is what backs the result at this level. The only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard. But as far as these things live in you, it will never go again. The only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting is not these things. No matter how God punishes you, please hear me, these things will not leave. 
the only way these things will leave is when you go back and you cannot undo what you already know that is the reason why Lucifer the light bearer can still make you prophesy can still make you wealthy Lucifer you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God and there were possibilities that were tied to his office when he fell the possibilities did not go the knowledge is still with him therefore the results still continue to come it is true it is true there is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to not the baby in the manger not the 12 year old Jesus not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus there was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for and the father told that version creation now hear ye this version not the version in the tabernacle hear me everything you are looking for is looking for you but not this version of you so once and again your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there and returns back and say we have not yet seen him your future is answering God so the Bible says creation is waiting waiting for the manifest creation keeps checking are they there he says they are not yet there but when you grow you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the sons of God please hear me there is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level no there is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge the future of this ministry is already waiting checking for us and saying koinonia has not arrived in that future koinonia is not yet there if we stop here god will have to make do with what is available but that's not what would have been so when we continue to grow a day will come this building will start driving us this building like a living thing will start saying go out go out of this environment and the environment waiting for us will start saying come you are ready there is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you it must drive you the key is not to start looking for another house the key is to wait you will know you are ready when the house starts driving you there are clothes you are wearing today that will run away you will not give it you will not sew it but you will not find it the same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing where were they where are they now the clothes you wore 10 years ago where is it you did not pack it in a bag and sewed it where did it go to please understand what i teach you these are the secrets that the lord brought to me and gave me rest i don't chase things you can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe provided it is on earth they will walk like the animals this was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of noah the animals were in the bush if noah went looking for them one by one he would die there i show you this from scripture noah built the ark the moment the ark was ready this law started calling the animals one by one they started marching if animals came to the ark your money is on earth but the hand to collect it is not this hand there is a hand that is trained by the lord when you lift it from all over the earth it will come there was a time in this ministry i'm rounding up we didn't have a domiciliary account not because we didn't see the need to we just felt no problem when the time comes we'll cross do you know how we opened a domiciliary account I'm just giving you an example in this ministry I was somewhere when the manager of GT Bank here the manager called me and he said sir I need to talk to you I'm the manager of GT Bank I said okay no problem and then I spoke with him and he said someone people have been trying to make transfers international transfers and here and there they change it to Naira and send it but that mm -mm, the, the is becoming overwhelming and one did not care whether you have an account or not he sent the money and the money has been hanging with no account to credit it and he said please can we open an account that was a sign i said we have gotten there 
We have gotten to that level. If I open a domiciliary account 20 years ago for the ministry or 15 years ago, let me tell you what will happen. It will keep being dormant. You will reopen, dormant, reopen, dormant, reopen until the day your growth gets there, then you call it breakthrough. It was not just breakthrough. It was growth. Ah, rejoice not over me, my enemies. What you are mocking me with is in my future. I just need to grow there. My brothers and sisters, hear me. What is a house that it should intimidate you? What about the paint cannot be manufactured again? What about the space? Just be patient and grow. When you get to that point, you will grow there. You can patch through life and keep drawing results like a rubber ring. They will shoot back and leave you in shame. I choose the way of growth. There are levels this ministry has not gotten to. I'm not ashamed. We will stay honorably and grant God grace to take us there. But when we get there, there is a level we get to where the satellites will start calling and say, come, come, come. At that level, you will find out that five or six business partners will come and say, Apostle, we are paying for the TV station of this ministry for 10 years. You know growth by the ease it brings. When there is unnecessary suffering and difficulty, sometimes it's not just pushing through by faith. It's that you are forcing life to deliver a result you have not gotten there. Amazing the things I so desired in my life and the way they come now that you cannot even drive them. These are the keys of the kingdom. So you can stay from one room and your mind is in an estate. Not just by wishful thinking. You can stay as a man of God and everybody is despising you. They are not seeing the grace of God upon your life. Don't worry. You don't have to move around with cards and saying, do you know I'm anointed? I've been watching you. You are acting as if I'm not a man of God. Don't worry. Let me tell you, if you remain in the same position, it is not just an attack. It is proof that you are not growing. You know you are growing by the possibilities that start leaving and others that start coming. There are things your yesterday should leave you for your tomorrow to come. If your yesterday follows you into your today, you are still in yesterday. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you and may you not forget this thing. Please rise up, hold hands together. Our time is gone. Hold hands with someone we have to pray tonight. Hold someone's hands. There is no need to rush. All provided for in your growth. All provided for. Listen to me. Listen to me. Pastor Femi's tiny baby girl. Do you know that small girl has a womb? But that womb cannot have a child why growth the womb is there but the womb cannot be with child give him a few years and he will not only be a father but he will be a grandfather sponsored by what growth men of god hear me don't be part of any diabolic association and any fraternity of evil doers because you are trying to grow in ministry just grow just grow and let me see the darkness that will cover your impact just grow as far back as april or may this year my schedules up until june 2020 has been full it is growth imagine that I have to go around every church and every place and say do you know I'm anointed have you not heard of one guy called Apostle Joshua Selman <laughs> let me even talk for my you see if you act like that you will, you will embarrass yourself there are many doing it if you have to advertise yourself it's proof that there are no results most people don't know the 
power of results. Results are so powerful. And it was noised abroad that Jesus was in town. Please pay attention this week and don't miss church on Friday. Go back after this prayer. I apologize, our time is gone. Go and meet the media after the prayer or go on YouTube. Search for all the teachings where I taught on the mysteries of the kingdom and success system. Use this week to sit down on it. If you can fast even for one or two days, add it. Don't listen to it on your way to the office. You will not understand anything there. Settle down with destiny. Lie down on the ground. As a man of God, carry what... Please pray. And pray for an enlightened mind. Pray your way out of that level. Understand your way out of that realm. And get to a realm where no power and no enchantment is able to stand you. Pray in one minute for the person whose hands you are holding. Father, my brother, my sister must step into a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness. Please make sure you are praying. You will get to a point where your life becomes a praise to the nations. A generation cannot ignore you. It's impossible. Impossible. There is a lady and a guy that the power of God will touch outside. Please bring them. I want to talk to them. A lady outside and a gentleman two of them the anointing of god will come mighty upon them mighty upon them Sisters, it pays to walk with the Lord. It pays to walk with the Lord. You know why many people never carry the presence of God? We have deceived people for a long time that there is nothing to do to carry the presence of God. Nothing can be further from that truth. There is a huge price, a huge price to carry the presence of God. Those who don't walk in the reality, unfortunately, are the ones who teach about it the most. And they teach all kinds of theories and grammar. And deceive people in the body of Christ that there's nothing to be done. Just believe. Are you joking? Everything that is of value has a price, brothers and sisters. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. You want to command signs and wonders, there is a huge price. The price is death. The price is death. The price is not negotiation. Only dead men carry the glory of God. The glory of God is not pure. Only dead men carry His glory. Only dead men carry His glory. Ask that I declare, Lord, I bring your presence into the lives of these people. May their lives never be the same. I stretch my hands over them. I declare that this cause that has followed your family, I bring it to an end. The Bible says to appoint unto them that morning Zion give them beauty for ashes it's not theory it's not a book you write it's a reality it's not something you explain I told us 
that the Bible says is a year of trial. Remember the teaching that there will be less talk, less talk. God, God has said it again. God told me that there will be less talk. There's too much noise making in the body of Christ. Noise making, excellent communications that carry no life, no power. So people go back with their problems. They keep getting intelligent in their brains and no result to justify it. That's why we are singing that song. When his light comes upon you, the worst is that they will criticize you, but no one will deny the finger of God. Listen, it's not hard. It's because we men of God have lied to you. We gather you and make it look as if it's a fortune to get the hand of God. No, sir. There is a price. The price for God's presence is not wearing suits. The price for God's presence is not learning Greek and Hebrew. Please hear me, especially if you're a pastor here. The price for God's presence is not protocol and gathering people and feeling like a big man. I say it again. The price for the glory is death. Except the corn of wood falls to the ground. Anyone can preach what he wants to preach about it. But brother, if you want to be used by God in this generation, I tell you the price is death. You don't, you don't do part-time with God and get his glory. Part-time nonsense is the reason why many people never find God. There is a search. You seek him like a treasure that you will die if you don't find. Not a treasure that you do something else if you don't find him. You seek him as a treasure that you will die if you don't find him. Christ for his glory. So don't let somebody tell you, every man I can get to God. No, possibilities are defined by the sacrifices upon every man's altar. So don't let anyone fool you and say what any man can do, any other man can do. Theoretically true. But practically, my brother, no sir. It's like saying any man can become a professor. You didn't lie. But any, everybody will not be a professor. There is a price. One of the things I want you to learn tonight is please may God grant you the grace to respect anointed people when you see them. Do you know why many people bring curses upon their lives? When a man of God has a track record with God, listen, let me, let me give you a, I don't know why I'm talking along this line. If this is all the encouragement before I begin to minister to you, some of the yokes upon the lives of people are not caused by they are not caused by generational causes they are caused by foolishness are we together now yeah. when when you trivialize what god is doing in a man you trivialize the investment that god has made upon that man and that grace never blesses you you open up yourself to woes and tragedies for instance there are some of our family members right now the problem they are crying for that they can hop from city to city paying money for prayer praying money for deliverance paying money for counseling can be received freely if only a heart of honor and humility is in place when I was on my way coming back I saw many people sitting down outside and just smiling admiring the crowds of people coming and honestly not because I'm the one preaching I said my God can a man be this foolish Will I ever see the presence and the glory of God close to me and not jump at it? There are people who started traveling day before yesterday. They don't even know where to stay. And they are just more than grateful they are in the presence of God. And there are others who are a minute walk away. It usually is like that. That's why people never receive. There are people, while I'm talking now, they are scattered all around Jesus. They say, wow, this guy... Maybe some will say he has charm. Go and get it. Get the charm that produces this result. You think it's easy to get a charm? May God grant you the fruit of you. That when you see God in a place and a thing, you plunge in and receive. Not that you sit down and be a spectator. And allow your life to be wasted. This year, 
is not the year you should play with any opportunity God gives. Because on the other side of God's presence is a fierce, fierce 2007 waiting for disobedient people. Like Goshen and Egypt. Are you hearing the cries of the glory? Are you hearing the lamentation, the hopelessness? People are confused. They don't even know what to do with their lives again. Charms are not working again. Jobs are not working again. Everything is going on. And God calls a solemn assembly so that he will step in and bless you. Very good. Forever Yahweh Yahweh Lord we look to Yahweh Yahweh I want to start my teaching tonight with a simple question. Brothers and sisters, help me answer this question. Why do people, why do born again families, why do communities and territories and individuals continue to walk in a life of perpetual failure, perpetual oppression, in spite of all the opportunities? And the anointings that are available. It's a tragic situation. To have men and women. Well meaning believers who love and fear God sincerely. Never have anything work well in their life. I identified a few reasons. And I want you to learn this very quickly. Because we are going to pray. Please, can you take this anointing? Just, can you take it and keep it here? Is that okay? Please, it's, it's nothing fetish. I'm just, it's just an instruction. Just, just soak the glory. Just drop it here. Thank you. Listen, why do these things happen to me? Number one, very quickly. The first reason I identified and I wrote it here is it may be a long sentence but just listen carefully the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs the conscious exclusion of Jesus not God not God Jesus in their lives and affairs the number one reason why certain people will never have a testimony the conscious exclusion of Jesus in their lives and their affairs I don't mean they are not born again that's not what I'm saying the conscious exclusion like you want to have a serious meeting then you tell somebody please can you go outside the conscious willful exclusion of Jesus in their lives and affairs Are we together now? You see, there is this arrogance and overdependence of our intellectualism. I'm not against intellectual prowess. You should know that. I'm an advocate of mental development and so on and so forth. But listen to me. Overdependence on our abilities, our connection, our education, our wisdom business skills etc these things make us to consciously exclude jesus in our lives usually we include jesus only when we think we are not trained enough for what we are supposed to do 
oh i went to school doesn't jesus know i'm a master's holder jesus wait this is the issue of intelligence when we get to spiritual issues we bring you and then he steps out because he's, he's a very very gentle man pride over dependence on our ability proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 and 7 says trust in the lord with all your heart listen and lean not on your own understanding right the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path verse 7 says do not be wise be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the lord and turn away from him what is the evil depending on your strength let me tell you why god is humbling so many people this arrogance of being self-made self-made degree holder self-made doctor self-made professor self-made millionaire self there is nobody that is self-made everybody is spirit assisted whether they know it or will accept it or not are we together the first reason why many people never get God's assistance over dependence on our ability oh my power my might I built this great ministry I have sons and daughters to show for it I built so 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 and so I'm an intelligent man everybody tells me that attitude excludes you will never find the hand of God that way. hear what I'm saying you may not like what I'm saying, but just pay attention. Over dependence on our abilities. When the miracle happens, then we religiously come and say, Lord, I give you glory. But even you, you know, you are just doing the testimony so that men will hear what you have done. Not because you were sincere with giving God glory. It's God's will that I may decrease that she alone may increase huh? all my qualification all my business acumen all my parenting skills all my CEO mentality when you come before God you pack those things box them and drop them and glorify his name is the reason why many cannot worship him is the reason why many cannot do anything because to them they are superstars and everywhere including a church is the stage apostle joshua selman did you see him as he came did you see how people were running up and down and we stupidly take god out of our ministry you see that yeah that's what a lot of people have done you left seeking god and became a ceo of a church and you started running it by yourself. That's why it's killing you. Let me tell you something with God. One thing I know about God. It's not that I'm told. God is a jealous God. I don't know how you want to interpret it. Use Hebrew and Greek is still the same thing. God is a jealous God. The jealousy of God is the dimension of him that fiercely fights anything that attempts to displace him. Ask Lucifer what happened to him. There was war even in heaven. The conscious exclusion. Oh, I'm healthy. Why should I pray? I'm healthy. Why should I fast? So we have all this fire brigade approach. Only when things go wrong, we now come and bribe God with money. We bribe God with tight. We bribe God with our shoe. And the time we wrap something and say, God, just take and solve my problem. And God is saying, am I that cheap to you? Is this all you know about me? Oh, I'm a business tycoon. I'm a multi-millionaire. I have, I have all kinds of companies running everywhere. And then, by the time your wisdom fools you, you now come and say, oh God, God, you know, you, uh -uh. you said you're a tycoon. Tycoons are intelligent people. You continue. Listen, when other men are priding in themselves, you better know why God blesses you. And be outspoken about it. I'm a testimony of the love and the faithfulness of are we together? Conscious exclusion of God. 
the embarrassment still on that same point the embarrassment of the need for assistance and dependence of God, on God the embarrassment that comes with acknowledging your need to be helped there are many people who like to say nobody helped me nobody helped me I did it by myself nobody helped me I rose from rags to riches by myself I became a millionaire by myself I became anointed by myself no man of God laid hands on me I was rolling under the floor in the presence of God then an angel appeared to me and said son stand up from today I anoint you over this and that and we talk those foolish things most people find it embarrassing to say their lives are a product of many contributions we think that the moment you acknowledge ah at this point in my life God used a genie to help me at this point in my life God used some to help me it makes you cheap so we rather trivialize all the help and we join God in the equation okay God I gave my life to you that's all right that's your own honor enjoy that one but this one wisdom I, I have it a man can receive nothing until it is given to him have you read that a man can receive nothing that's why many people, the lady will come and say, look, by God's grace, so it's not pride, but am I not beautiful? And you find out that you never marry. Nobody will even tell you good one. And you are wondering why. With all this beauty, you see that the brothers are blind. Believe me, they are not blind. But there is a God that gives husband and wife. And you have excluded that God out of your life because you think you are okay. Or a brother who got a small job 150,000. I say, God forbid, I can't marry any kind of lady. I've mean, I, I paid my price. I have 150,000 naira job. Let me describe the kind of lady. And God says, This is a rich, a stupid, stupid boy who does not know how God assists men to rise. Then they now threaten you that they are going to downsize people. And they, you, you are shocked to find out that although you are, you are brilliant, your name is there. You are about to go. God will say, Use your power and your might. And keep yourself there. Total dependence on Jesus. Outspoken dependence on Jesus. Not that you say they know. We don't know. Say it. Let your life show it. Let your ringtone show it. Let everything show it. You know this Christian thing. I don't want to put it on my head. You better put it on your head. That is the symbol of safety. You better put it on your head. In this wicked world now, put it on your head clearly so that you'll be free. Are we together? I don't know about you, but I depend on him. I depend on him. If God does not assist me, no man can assist me. If God does not help me, he said, I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. From when, how can I write the equation of my life and then add God? I will not even add God. He's the Alpha Omega. If there is anything to add, maybe it's me that somewhere out, he will even allow me to add and say, okay, and my addition is my alignment. I will together. Please, I want you to repent tonight. Especially some of us here and there that have results here and there in our lives. In business, like that gentleman who came out smiling, that he, he made one million. You see that? It's a wonderful testimony. You can now stand up and say, No, I must get my own one million. Too. And then start the journey of pain in your life. If God does not give a man anything, you can't have it. You can't have it. You have to understand this. That's why people don't get saved. Let me tell you. That's why people don't get saved. And Jimmy, if you point someone here and tell him there is a multi-billion naira business in Abuja you want to connect him with, will he be too busy? He won't be too busy. The wife will say, honey, but I thought we were supposed to have a time together. I say, which time I will slap you now. You know, with the money we'll have a time together. Let's go to Abuja. Because you consider it to be valuable. Valuable. So when the house of God 
become something you have to advise yourself to go it's a sign you are excluding God out of your life are we together now he said I was glad when they said unto me let us go he didn't go alone let us go let us go I've said it again please if you're a parent here hear me as much as God grants you grace involve your children in your conviction especially if your children are as small as this are one are little children are we together don't leave the children with nanny and say they used to make noise they should make noise it's better to make noise in the presence of god than keep them at home and allow a strange spirit enter them and begin the journey of pain in your life let them come and sleep here nobody's complaining i'd like you to pray one minute while you are seated and say lord you are not one of those important things in my life I repent for just acting you after doing everything I think is the reason why my life is moving. I now add you to feel spiritual. Lift your voice and say, I repent. I repent of that pride. I repent of that pride. Kabbalah Kosatai. I acknowledge you. Listen, the Bible says, Except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord builds a ministry, except the Lord builds a family, except the Lord builds a business, they labor in vain. He didn't say they will not do it, they labor in vain, pouring water in the basket, pouring water in the basket, it will never fool. Pour the water in the whole world in a basket, no miracle will make it fool. So that's the first reason. Still on point one. Let's look at the scripture God showed me. Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. Media, is it possible? Can we have it? Isaiah 31, verse 1 to 3. God gave me a sound warning that I should give it to us. Not like a threat or something, but I think it's an advice that is very instrumental to us. Isaiah 31, from verse 1 to 3. Let's just hurry up before they find it. The danger of trying to use the world's way of doing things to get God's results. Are we together now? Still part of point one is an addition I noted here and I must explain it. The danger of using the world's formula and expecting God's result. It does not happen. The world has its way of getting money. The world has its way of parenting. The world has its way of getting fame. Listen. The world has its way of, li of, of living long. The world has its way of understanding. When you come to God, the kingdom of God is an entirely different system. The Bible says you are in the world, but not of the world. Right? Isaiah 31, you can write it and go and read it. He said, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. Egypt is the place of captivity. The dark world. This includes going to Habalis. Please look up. Let me talk to us. Are you not amazed, the Jimmy, at the rate at which people, Christians, run to the village, run to Habalis. We join God and we join a little of something they give you like a belt on your waist. You are still, I don't care even if it's Jesus that is written on it. A Habalist is a Habalist. They gave you something. They said during your exam, you should just take it. You have to stand by one in the afternoon. Exactly one. Take it with your right hand. It's nonsense. I don't care even if you are reciting whatever. Be careful. Everything that is of God is consistent with this one. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Very, very important. Woe to them who go down to Egypt for help. God has his way of doing things. You want to build a house. The world has its way of building a house. The kingdom has its way of building a house. You want to access wealth and prosperity. The world has its way of doing things. Many believers go down to Egypt. And we try to access help. Whereas there is no help in Egypt. For 430 years they were in Egypt. There was no help. Until they left Egypt and they began to walk. Are we together? I'm not against 
enlightenment but some of these some of these junk materials we read all around that attempt to suggest facts and figures that negate the word of god yet we adopt them and we call it civilization please look at me look at me let me have your attention i don't care the word of god transcends every generation whether you are young whether you are old there are irrefutable truths that defines the standards of god say amen Woe to them who go down to Egypt for them. You want to build a house. You are putting yourself under pressure. The wall says go to the back and go and collect loan. Correct? Go and collect loan. And you don't inquire from God. You run and go to the bank. They give you a loan. The next day an armed robber comes and puts a gun. And says you better bring out that loan. I was in the bank. Bring everything out. And then you have two loans to pay. The one you need to build the house and all of that and the journey starts and at the end of your life you have high blood pressure you have stroke the world says if you want to keep a wife beat her beat her once let her see you beat her then she will know you are man enough that's the world's way now you are born again but those advices are still coming once in a while your uncle says that advice i gave you i think he's working are we together The Bible says the divine health is a possibility. I'm not against medicine and all of that. But divine health is a possibility. And for you, you have never tried to stretch your faith for once. To believe God and say, I can live here. Are we together? The Bible says favor is possible. The world's fashion of favor is bribe and corruption. You force it. Go to them who go down to Egypt. There is a way God finances and builds his church. You didn't find out. And so you play gimmicks on people. All kinds of gimmicks on people. And you find out that every Sunday, every Saturday, you are always on deficit. God gave you a child. There is a formula for paying the school fees of the child. Don't complain that there's no money. Go to God and find out. Lord, I was pregnant for nine months. I'm aware that there are women who have not been able to give birth. How did you design funding the destiny of this child? Please hear what I'm saying because this is a very serious issue. How many husbands and wives come together? How many young people, how many leaders sit down and say, look, we are confused. Let's get God in this picture. Lord, we are absolutely confused. We need you to step in. They say, let's deliberate then later on, when it gets to hard, it's okay, let's pray tongues for five minutes. God, who lied to you that adding God to your life is a minus? Who lied to you that adding God to your business is a minus? Who lied to you, listen, that adding God to your relationship is a minus? Who deceived you that adding God to your church is a minus? Adding God to your friends and driving out the bad ones is a minus. Oh, I don't want to lose him. You better lose him. If, if adding God to his life is what will make him to go, that's a sign that you have been delivered. Please hear what I'm saying. There are people seated hearing me. You have never given your heart to Jesus Christ. You have never. You've had preachers speak again and again. Every time they talk, you just sit down outside and say, ah, I was touched by ah, ah. See how this guy is really talking about God. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't mean to scare you, but let me just tell you one truth that we have not had for a long time. Hellfire is clean. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people there, some left this morning. As you were coming for Koinonia, some people left. They are there right now as we speak. Preach whatever you want to preach. But I can tell you one thing. Hell is very, very good. So you can be as arrogant as you want to be. And say I'm an atheist. I went to America and I spent two, two years. I went to Harvard. I, that's alright. 
you are permitted to carry your foolishness for as long as it lasts. But I can tell you one thing only a fool will say in his heart, There is no God. Please hear me. Some of us are parents, and I say, All due respect. There are many fathers and there are many mothers, some listening to me by radio. Your family is nose diving because, as the priest of the home, you have refused to bring God. When your wife is praying, you now say, Honey, make sure you pray for me. Or you just enter the blanket. No. no. Let me challenge any young man here planning to marry. If you are not more spiritual than the woman you want to marry, you are in trouble. You better catch up. Join prayer ban on Tuesday. Join. Have a personal prayer time and double up. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Your spirituality defines everything. I wish above all things that you prosper, even to the degree that your soul prospers. What shall it profit a man? The Bible says, if you gain the whole world, if you have all the ministries in the world, and at the end of it, lose your soul. Praise the Lord. So there are people seated hearing me. You, you really need to ask yourself this question. Have, have I been saved? Am I born again? I know I came for healing. I came for a miracle. I know I'm 65 years old. I know I'm 12 years old. Are you born again? Have you really brought Jesus to your life? An open invitation to say, Lord, I'm tired of mismanaging my life. My intelligence is failing me woefully. I come to you. I come to you. As a child will run to his father. Right? The prodigal son came to himself. And said, look, how many hired servants has my father? I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me now as one of your servants. And the Bible says, while he saw him. Coming afar off, he ran, embraced him, kissed him. And restored and put back the seed. The evil in the world is too much for any man to be living his life without Christ. That you took beer and drove yourself from Karuna to Zaria is the mercy of God. You keep trying it. One day you just open your eyes and find out you are not in the world. Disrespect for God and his values. I'm going to make an altar call now. We need to make it. The atmosphere is right for an altar call. Two altar calls in one. Please pay attention. Two altar calls. Just carry the lady gently. You are here seated listening to me. Those online, pay attention to Jesus is calling you. The Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, Take upon me my yoke and learn of me. For I am lowly in heart. Right? He says, my burden is easy. My yoke is light. The one you are carrying is killing you. Two sets of people. One, those who are saying, man of God, as you are speaking, the Holy Spirit is telling me, I need Jesus. Not I need God. Not I need God. God is many things to many people. There is no other name given unto man by which men must be saved. God does not save men. There is a name. Jesus Jesus are we together this westernization that has made everything called God there are people God is a donkey there are people God is a tortoise there are people God is a small image somewhere looking like something but we are talking about Jesus the name that is above all names when he is lifted then he will draw all men to himself the second category of people who are coming out here are those who are saying man of God Sincerely, I've responded to an altar call, but I cannot say my life is a reflection of the will of God. I don't care about the house of God. I don't care about the things of God. My children should do anything if they want to do. I do anything I want to do. I watch anything I want to watch. I do anything I want to do. Please, let's save time. I'm going to count one to five. Nobody's closing his eyes. There are people in all the overflows scattered around. As you hear my voice, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front here and say, man of God, I need you to talk to, 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 to pray for me. One. Run like there's fire on the mountain. If you are too big, please go back. Two. 
come and stand and passionately cry before God. Three, passionately cry before God. Lord, I've come to you from the depth of my heart. I can't keep playing games with you. Keep coming. Are you running? Leave your friend if he's trying to throw you back. There's a spirit in him that will soon be casted out. If your friend holds you back, I assure you there is a spirit. Leave him and run and come. Don't say, I came with my girlfriend. I came with my boyfriend. Run to Jesus with all your heart. Keep clapping, please. Motivate them as they're coming. Man of God, it's as if you've been talking to me. Yes, you are right. You are the one I've been talking to. And Jesus is calling you. Rush to him. Say, Lord, I'm tired. I, I can't keep fighting this for long. I got admission into APU and I became something else. I, I became a graduate and I became something else. I'm not ashamed. I'm coming to you. It is like an award ceremony. You are not closing your eyes. Please run to Jesus. The Lord is still telling me there are people. In the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Come and stand before him. And shame the devil over your destiny. Shame the devil over your destiny. Listen. Many of us standing here are young people. One day you are going to be a father. One day you are going to be a mother. The father and the mother you hate right now. That made you got into your lifestyle. They had an opportunity when they were young. They ignored Jesus but embraced education. So they became graduates without Christ. And they married without Christ. Although the wedding was done in the church. And the disaster is the values of the kingdom are not reflected in our family. The average young man seated here, in the next five to ten years, he will be married. Your conviction is what you are going to transfer to your home. Every stupid man today was a stupid young man. Correct? He married and just wore suit on that stupidity and took it to his home. We are sick and tired of a godless society. A society that has no respect for God. We, we are pushing God out and saying, look, look, you know, I'm, I'm too fine for all this, this church thing. No. Addiction is the trend. Addiction for God. Outspoken addiction. Listen, I salute you, ladies and gentlemen. Don't come out as if you are going to the graveyard. Nobody's morning is a thing of joy. I'm about to lead you to make the greatest decision in your life. There are many of you years after now you will be leading others. Ladies, you are standing here for the sake of your children. One day they will look at you and say, Mommy, thank you for giving your life to Jesus when you were 21. Thank you for not joining this nonsense that is producing tears. There's no magic about a great future. You must run to Jesus like there's fire on the mountain. And for those of us who are sitting down, that you are sitting down doesn't mean you should not be here because there are people that are still supposed to be here but while you are seated you must say Lord make me serious with you an addiction for you an addiction for you an addiction for you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears yeah I'm not here to condemn you no no with all the love in my heart if I had my way I would hold every one of you because you have made a decision that will save a generation. Everyone who rejects Christ has implicated his generation because you can only give what you have. Those of you in front, please lift your right hand seriously. Lift it high to the heavens. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Please say it from your heart. Say it again, Lord Jesus. Don't worry, you can cry, it's alright. Lord Jesus. Don't let me look at me. Look at me. I love you. There is a boy that disturbs you. Eh? Send that boy a text and say, Joshua Selman asks you to send him a text. He'll never come near you again. Because you love God and God wants to use you. Hmm? You keep loving God and that boy keeps, I don't know who he is. Drive him far from your life. Tell him I said so. In Jesus' name. Huh? So you pray that prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart this night I have had your word and I come to you 
Asking you to forgive me. Asking you to cleanse me. I believe I can be better than I am now. So I don't fight you again. Come into my heart. It belongs to you. Take everything that is mine and make it yours. Use me for your glory. Every condemnation, every guilt upon my life lives now and forever in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. I want to pray for you. Father, look at the ones you died for. They have come genuinely and openly to express before your people a commitment to love you and a commitment to live for you. Father, I pray that you honor their sincerity in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon your life and from today, the appetite you used to have, you will no longer have it forever. I release grace upon you to drive some people from your life and I release grace upon you to invite others into your life. I decree and declare that any association, I don't care how long they have been with you and don't favor the cause of the kingdom may today be your parting with them forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now please hold on. I want you to walk. The service is still on. Very quickly and you'll be back. Two instructions. Please listen. One, you will follow that lady when I'm done talking and we're going to have your details. Please make sure you give your accurate details. Your name and your number and whatever information. We need it because it will help us to be able to follow you up. Number two, and please let this be an announcement to the whole house. As a general rule, every time you are born again, the moment you are born again, automatically, you are a member of the prayer department for one month. Automatically. Are we together? When you are born again, so that for those of us who brought them now, if any of your loved ones is among the people, you encourage them. Automatically, for the next one month, you are a member of the prayer department. It's a model we have used from the onset of this ministry. When people get born again, the next thing is to give them an opportunity to have a kingdom community. Once they have a community of like-minded people that love God, they will have the strength to be able to shake off the things that are limitations. But if you leave them alone, sooner or later, the pressure will be too much on them and they will go back. Are we together now? So please, the prayer department, 4 to 6 at Rema Chapel. Rema Chapel is just across. For those of you who are not domiciled in Zaria, no problem. When you get your various ministries or places, you can always connect with living churches around and then be part of the prayer team at least for a month. It will build your spirit, you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to walk understand spiritual things and then from there your growth continues the lord bless you in the name of jesus please go ahead and follow the lady this you should create multiple points for them I appreciate them everyone if i told you receive your job you will clap with all your heart keep clapping till they go Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, those coordinating them, coordinate them very fast. There should be multiple systems so that you coordinate them very fast and then they'll be back to come and catch up with the service. There are quite a number of them, so please, if they need some hands, we should have a few people assist them very quickly. Number two, the second reason why people continue a life of hardship and misery. Second reason, quickly, number two. Is ignorance and disobedience to God's principles ignorance and disobedience to god's principles will be very fast please just five minutes let's wrap this up very quickly so that we can begin to pray ignorance and disobedience to god's principles ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 it says the labor of the fool weary every one of them because he does not know the road to the city not because there is no road he does not know it ecclesiastes chapter 10 
and verse 15 ignorance and disobedience to god's principles write one more scripture ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 we may not have time just write them you can go and read them during your personal time with god ignorance and disobedience to god's principles look up please you know that one of the mandates that god has given us as a ministry is to teach men the principles of the kingdom i am i am obsessed and passionate about helping believers understand the systems in the kingdom and how to walk through those systems and experience victory in their lives so ignorance and disobedience is very costly number three please quickly number three the third reason why people go through perpetual hardship hardship in their life is demonic oppression the reality of demonic oppression write it down ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 the reality of demonic oppression demonic forces are real the activity of the dark world is real the bible did not leave us in confusion as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness first john chapter 5 verse 19 first john chapter 5 verse 19 he says we are of god and the whole world lieth in wickedness the condition to experience the the fierce wickedness in this world is that you are born you know um hold on there is there is a popular adage or cliche that people have all around the moment there is any kind of demonic intrusion they say who did i offend you've had that statement who did i offend though i didn't offend it. i left the village peacefully look he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me you know the meaning of that i was never given an opportunity to choose whether i want the devil to oppress me or not the moment you are born that reality implicates you at once Do not ever trivialize the fact that the dark world is still at work in our days. At work does not mean in dominion. At work means there is a consistent attempt by the forces of darkness to, if allowed, jeopardize every part of your Christian life and every part of your Christian experience. Finances, family, career, education, spiritual life every area satan will not leave any stone on turn to see that he destroys you john 10 10 says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 paul himself speaking he says once and again i desire to come unto you but satan hindered us first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 but satan hindered us satan can hinder men that's why god puts a miracle service like this to come and break down that that system that he has built over the lives of people i gave us an admonition earlier on while speaking and i want to repeat it never consult mediums the occult and so on and so forth for help no never consult mediums listen the occult the dark world all kinds of extraterrestrial astral transcendental activities in an attempt to receive help jesus said i am the door every other person who comes came through the window I am the door. I am the door. When you come in through the door, you are safe. You come in through the window, there are side effects. Two scriptures. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the whole. Um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6.
to play the harlot after them. I will even set my face against that soul and I will cut him from off among his people. People who consult what? Familiar spirits. People who consult mediums. Occultic activities. Right? Many of them parading as different things. You go to your village, you enter one room. They say, sit down. We want to do something for you. Incisions all around for protection. Say, eat this razor blade. Anybody that touches you, that razor blade will strike you. Demonic activities. They concoct one kind of drink and they tell you, take it. And recite all kinds of things. The Bible says, whoever does that, I personally, I will set my face against it. Ah, but apostle, I've done it already. You are welcome to the miracle service. That's why you will be delivered. That's why you will be sent for. From all of that to wives who put their husbands in bottles for correct behavior, to husbands who put their wives, all kinds of, of things people have. People have arrows in their homes and, and, and weapons that are, are demonic with, with charms. Let's be sincere. Things you hide under your carpet. You are just sitting down. You see strange men enter your house to slaughter all kinds of animals. They wake you in the middle of the night. All that consult mediums. All that consult mediums. Some persons may be listening to me online. Let, let me tell you, when God convicts you, adjust. Some of us are sincere, but our families, especially those of us who are coming from other faiths into the Christian life, or automatically you need to be prayed for. Automatically. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Quickly, please. We we'll trust God for a very quick walk tonight. Thank God by His grace we've made the altar call. Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 and 11. If you are not there, just listen. There shall not be found among you anyone who maketh his son, parents, listen, or daughter pass through the fire. Or who useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, Zarya's um, city. Where are we? Or a consultor of mediums. Listen, I'm listening to them. Or a wizard, or a necromancer. Next verse says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Men pass through strange fires, necromancy, transcendental meditation, astral travels, all kinds of extraterrestrial demonic activities. The Bible warns, this is Africa and I understand. I'm not an American speaking. I've told you my story. Don't think that I was born out of a Bible. There is almost no family here that is innocent. Tra just trace it just one generation after you. Someone worshipped something somewhere. Or they received Christ and was serious. So it's still the same thing. Somebody was involved somewhere. And many people have been victims of those kinds of people. Hallelujah. Demonic powers are real. Their agenda to stop the purposes of God over your life are real. But one thing the Bible says is that the light shines in the darkness. Hallelujah. And it says the darkness cannot comprehend. That's why I know that every force that has held anyone's life today, in the name of the Son of the living God, it must give way. The last reason why do people remain under the yoke, the fierce yoke of oppression? The last reason, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. The last reason I'll give tonight, they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment. Yes, we are social beings, but brothers and sisters, we are also spiritual beings. Every man must be empowered. Jesus himself told them, tarry in Jerusalem 
until he be and you be power from on high. Tarry, tarry. Don't be in a rush. Tarry until you have an evidence that can keep darkness away. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. 6 verse 10, Ephesians. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Finally, brethren, finally, koinonia, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of his might. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass in that day, right? That the burden shall be lifted from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be taken away from your neck. And the burden shall be destroyed because this is the singular reason why burdens are destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing, do not reject empowerment. Listen, empowerment is not for men of God. Are we together? Empowerment is not for those doing church and ministry and evangelism. Empowerment is not for leaders, empowerment is for every believer. Every believer. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is your basis for establishment. You cannot live in today's wicked world without empowerment. Apostle Joshua Selman does not guarantee to be there for you every time you need him. But there is an anointing you can receive from the Holy Spirit. Standing in partnership with the Lord will raise a standard against him. I believe in running to men of God to help you and pray for you. But there is no man of God that gives you guarantee of 100% attention. It's impossible. There are times you can call me and I'm sleeping. Why? Because I'm human. But there is a keeper of Israel who neither sleeps nor slumbers. And the Bible says that he's willing. That outpouring of power. Part of the things you must trust God for tonight is an empowerment. An empowerment against fear. An empowerment against all kinds of oppressions of darkness. Fear. Right? Perfect love. Cast out fear. For fear hath torment. There are many of us who need empowerment. You are afraid. Just to go from here to Kaduna, you are praying in tongues all through the car. Not praying in tongues of faith. Just fear. You want to nod your head and rest a little. The driver just might say, Driver, be careful, oh, please. Fear. Fear makes us suspect everyone. You come to someone's house, they put food and you look at it. I said, no, they, they put spoon here. Why is this person? This person wants to kill me. Fear. You need an empowerment. If you don't say, I, I'm old. Don't be afraid. You are now a man. No, there's no such thing as a man. A man means you have an anointing. Hello? A man means you have what? No matter how old you are. Gentlemen, listen to me. If this thing is not of you, you are not yet a man. Because gone are the days where you fight with horses and chariots. Someone stands and speaks. And a wicked arrow lands upon your life with all your energy and physical stature. Makes rubbish and nonsense out of you. The woman who makes incantation, you can beat her physically. But she will call you from Italy to come and die in your village. Men are men who have power. Power with God. Power with God. Power with God. They invoke a charm against you before they finish their death. That's the registration to me that not every word is fake. Come on now. They bring your picture as they as they show it. The fire they are trying to invoke comes out from the picture and burns the face of every devil to ashes. And you are not praying. It's not like you are praying at home. Maybe you are even cheating. What is working? My head. My head, my, my head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The anointing is a powerful mystery. It's a mystery till we get to heaven we will understand. The anointing is not falling down and shaking. The anointing is not people moving around. Those are just effects. Boy, the anointing is a force. A force that works. You speak with the anointing, you get results. You speak because you are shouting, you have something. See that? You make bold claims without the anointing, they visit you in the night. 
you make bold claims with the anointing whether day or night you are still in control how terrible art thou in thy ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee in the name of Jesus from tonight some of you as you are going back home you are not even saying anything as you are going back to your house it's an announcement to the spiritual climate of your territory you are saying no more no more no more nobody passes with all this wicked spirit and then it lands on you no i'm not i'm not a dumping ground they don't cast a demon from a crusade ground and it's moving through arid regions and just sees me and lands on don't think i'm joking demons still find men you come out fine and return back with a fierce spirit on you and find out that you are suddenly getting angry you were not like that you are an angry person you could never insult your husband but something comes as if everybody is a human being no a stranger has found entrance into your life ah i'm born again no demon can live in me please keep quiet you are a spirit you live in a body connecting your spirit and your body is a soul very big space for any amount of demons to stay are you hearing what i'm saying Please take it in serious. There are some habits people you cannot use resolution to stop. Oh man of God, I love God, but I just sit down and once I'm on my laptop, the next thing I'm watching, I can't help it. No, 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 no. It's not about trying to help it. There is an anointing that must stand upon your life in heaven because it's a spirit. Fill me up. Make sure you are praying. It's over. I declare it. It's my year of trial. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Goodness. I tell you, strange things are already happening inside and outside. This was the instruction the Lord gave me. That at the point this oil touches the head of everyone, then we begin to speak. Dramatic miracles. Dramatic deliverances. Bring them out. Lift your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of the living God. 
everyone online and here by the mystery of this oil any stranger Kabataya, any covenant every wicked spirit manipulating the destiny of anyone I decree and declare right now by the fire of the spirit let there be deliverance right now inside and outside yokes inside and outside I stand upon this oil I stand upon this place I decree and declare anyone under any demonic manipulation right now in the name of Jesus I command the spirits I command the devils off you go from their lives now off you go from their lives now bring them out lift your hands at the count of three you will shout Jesus my God I see massive deliverance outside massive deliverance outside freedom for people and families at the count of three that's all I want you to do thank you Jesus let there be complete deliverance one two shout it now three Jesus! be destroyed Jokes be destroyed every spirit every force every spirit every force every spirit every force every spirit lift your hands the spirits that cause failure that everything you do you don't succeed right now in the name of Jesus I command them to leave you now leave you now leave you now the spirit of failure the spirit of failure the spirit of failure lift your hands my God I want to pray for students because I'm seeing like a blue flame there is a spirit that which haunts the academics of students you are a student here get ready liberty comes to you at the count of three one two three leave them right now leave them right now they are academics oh, they have not been able to pass they have not been able to graduate I command that spirit you must go now you must go now Lift your hands. I don't know what force of darkness is responsible for bad luck in the lives of men. Simple things that should work out never work out. Now, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, whoever is a victim of that oppression as I speak now let the fire of the Holy Ghost land upon your life right now land upon your life right now land upon your life right now help them please bad luck lift your hands I tell you, there are so many miracles happening. Listen. Listen. I want to pray. I want to pray for men and women. Inside and outside. Listen to me. Do you know hardship is a cause? Hardship is more than poverty. Poverty is absence of money. Hardship is a hard life. No matter how high you rise, your life becomes hard. Lift your hands. I'm praying for families, not just individuals. 
So the power of God will come upon you from your family. I'm standing here and the Lord is asking me to face the minister's seat and stretch my hands. Every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, every spirit of hardship, I command freedom. I command freedom. Now I turn to the congregation. At the count of three, shout Jesus and that devil must leave your family. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Help that lady. Go, 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 go. Hardship. 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 I command you in the name of Jesus. I command you. You must go. I command you. You must go. You are a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Who is Veronica? Veronica. Veronica. Just leave them. We are praying. All those under the anointing, I set you free now. I command those devils, leave them forever. Leave their families forever. Strangers, go right now. The Bible says they will run when they hear his voice out of their hiding place. Therefore, I command every stranger in anyone's life and destiny. It's time for you to live and never return. Veronica, you are Veronica. Where are your parents? I'm seeing a light. Is your mother here? She's in Saria. She's in Saria. That's what I mean. Right here. Go and tell your family that God is bringing a major breakthrough. I'm seeing crying all over. But I'm prophesying to you that a, a breakthrough, a new chapter opens for the family in the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen. I'm just going to speak to a few people. But before I pray, I want you to check yourself. There are people you will check yourself and the pain is gone. You check yourself and there is a miracle. Run where you are. Don't sit down. The moment you find out there's a miracle, run. Pastor Jimmy will be here. Immediately run. We'll just take a few testimonies and then I'll minister healing very quickly. We have to be fast. Our time is gone. Who are these people? You are all Veronica. Look at me. There's witchcraft in your family. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Lord, let it go right now. Over her and her family, I cause witchcraft completely in the name of Jesus Christ. Is your sister here? Where is she? Sister, are you here? Quickly, please come. Come and hold her hands. I see a fight for the destiny of the people in this family, and God wants to set you free now. I stretch my hands. You are holding your hands. Representing the family. I break every altar. Responsible for hardship and pain in your family. And I declare right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That as my hand comes on both of you. Let there be the beginning of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. God is giving people miracles. Are you giving Jesus praise? Come on Koinonia. Make sure they confirm you and check you. God is touching people. Touching people. There is a lady. There is a lady you came here. Since 29th December. You have been bleeding non-stop. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Check yourself. It just stopped right now. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things concurrently. Your prayer request. Did you come with them? Or you forgot? Please bring them out. Always come with your prayer request when you come for the miracle service. Now, ushers, quickly, please collect the prayer request. If you are trusting God for a healing miracle, please, now is the time. Quickly, come out here very quickly. Come out here very quickly. Those outside, hold on. Those outside, if you are in the overflow and you are yet to come in. If you have come in, it's okay, you can come. But if you are yet to come, those in the overflow, the first overflow, just walk outside. Stand in front, outside at the projector. Those, the overflow at the roadside, just stand right there um, so that we can, we can make it fast. Those inside and those who have entered, come to the front quickly. 
trusting God for a healing miracle. Pass your request to the ushers. If there are ushers here or protocol, please collect quickly. And then you can come quickly. Please, HD. Um, okay. Pastor Jimmy will be outside. He will be outside with um, Shade. Come, stand up. Oh, stand up. This pastor's wife will have to start walking. Now, stand up. In the name of Jesus Christ, please. Three of you will go outside. In the name of Jesus, you will lay hands. Please come. I'll lay my hands on you. Let me lay my hands on them. It's a very good thing to expose them. Father, please announce them as they lay hands on the sick. In the name of Jesus, as they lay hands on the sick, let your healing power flow through them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So please, you go outside the gym. You can meet them. They can go outside here. And then, in the name of Jesus Christ, as they lay hands on you, please, if they don't ask you anything, don't worry. Just receive by faith. You don't have to start explaining. Our time is gone. Then, right here, Pastor Alpha, Pastor Femi, uh, Benga, okay, promise, you can also go. Mike, join them. Um, okay, no, no, no. Let's not do it that way. One, two, three. One, two, three. Will be enough. Okay, Mike, you can. Or, Pastor Alpha, you can stay. Um, Pastor Femi, Benga, Mike, I promise, you can go outside. You, you, you just position yourself and then you minister to them very quickly. And then, Pastor Alpha, you can join me and then we'll do it in Washington. You will help us. Please collect the request very quickly. Let's be very fast about it in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm praying a prayer now. Everyone, please participate and say amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that everyone sick here is declared free right now. And as hands are laid on you, let there be supernatural healing. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. At Calvary. At Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is there. At Calvary, at Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Over now, Jesus now. is now. Here.
Aaron is here, just, just indicate and then you'll drop it, please. Don't disorganize the line so that we can hurry up. Because by the time you go back, you will have collected.
this request. Stretch your hands on this request. We are going to pray on them right now. Please stretch your hands on this request. In the name of Jesus, there is a God that answers prayers. If you are outside, don't worry. If you are still on the healing line, it's not quick for you. But for time's sake, let's stretch our hands in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to declare that every request, please make sure we have all the requests. The request here. Every request is turned into a testimony. Go ahead and begin to declare it. This is our year of triumph. In this year of triumph, we decree and declare. We decree and declare. Supernatural miracles. Are you praying? Are you praying? Miracles, miracles, all the consolations of the earth. Miracles. Service February. Let there be results. Please believe it. Shaba Rakota Salatai. I say it again between now and miracle service February. Return with tears some testimonies. Every impossible situation represented here as touching your life your finances, your health, your family, may the God of heaven turn it into a testimony. Anyone who must be cleared on the way for this testimony to come to pass, we clear them from the way. Anyone who must appear for this request to be testimonies, we command them to appear. Anything that must change for this to be called a testimony, we command it to change. In the name of Jesus, Father, we trust you. We have presented this before you. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pick it back as testimonies. In the name of Jesus, you will do this and you will glorify yourself. In the name of Jesus. Now lift up your hands and pray for you now. I pray in the name of Jesus and I pray in the name of your life. Hard life. Hard life. The life of hardship. I command it to end now from your life. I command it to end now from your family. I command it to end now from your life. To end from your family. of opportunity you have never seen in the name of Jesus some of you beginning from tomorrow you will begin to see it believe what I'm saying you will begin to see it in the name of Jesus I don't know what a current event happens in your life while you think you have escaped it it happens again I'm prophesying to you it comes to an end right now in this year of triumph, it comes to an end right now. It comes to an end right now. Please stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak favor to your life. In the name of Jesus, 
the God who by grace has favored this ministry in an unbelievable dimension. I pray, may the favor that God has put upon this ministry, I transfer it strangely to your life. Receive it, receive it, receive it. Receive it right now. It begins to help her, please. My God, receive it right now. I release that favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Strength favor. Men helping you. Strength favor. Women helping you. Believe it. Strength favor. Enemies helping you. Critics helping you. Mysteriously. I decree and declare whatever has refused to work in your life you try it is working for others you see it working for others but when it's your turn it does not work I command it to begin to work now I command it to begin to work now ladies I pray for you I don't know what has covered your glory. You are great, you are virtuous, but glory covered. I declare that from this miracle service, an unfailing of your glory, an unfailing of your glory. I want to pray for everybody, but specifically for our brothers. One of the blessings of this year is that God will bless your hands. If you don't believe it, just keep quiet. Don't criticize. Just keep quiet. But for as many who are trusting God, that God will establish you as a man, I prophesy to you, receive that unction. Receive that unction. The unction that establishes men to be able to take care of their homes, to be ready to be a man in deed. Ta, 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 ta. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Lift your hands and see pray. Some of us are victims of foolishness. Therefore, I pray for you. The spirit of wisdom, be baptized with it right now. Be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. I don't know what you have lost, but this is January. God has declared that it's a year of trial. Therefore, I command, between now and next miracle service, receive double restoration. Double restoration. Double restoration. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you for speed. See, let me tell you something. When speed comes into your life, when speed comes into your life, you will be surprised that within a short time, you will catch up and do a lot of things. I prophesy to you, where they have overtaken you, something comes on your life this night. Run like Elijah. Pursue. Kaparete kata. Pursue. Overtake. Recover all without fail. I prophesy. Pursue, overtake, recover all. Two more prophecies, and we are done. I don't know what distracted you from loving God. You were not like that. Your prayer life was a priority. Your word life was a priority, but something feared you off. I pray fresh impartation of hunger for God and the things of God take it now take it now fresh hunger fresh fire fresh hunger prayer fire word fire fasting fire prayer fire word fire fasting fire receive it in the name of Jesus I break the cause of spiritual laziness. Laziness to wake up and pray. Laziness to fast. Laziness to study. I break it from your life in the name of Jesus. 
And I pray for you. Last prayer point. Some of you have been obeying God in the secret. But the result has refused to manifest. According to the word. When you do things in secret. God rewards you openly. Is that not what the Bible says? I want to prophesy to you. I don't know who shut the door. I'm praying you know, And this is for my spirit. I know you have been tightened. But there's, we have not seen the evidence. I know my God has helped you. I pray for you. And open testimony. Open proofs. Open results. Receive it right now. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Let that fire come on you. Anyone on your job here and you are having cases with your superiors, I'm praying for you now. Beginning from Monday, I change their hearts towards you. Whenever they are looking for men to promote, may you be the one for the recommendation. And anyone here called jobless, who is interested in a job or your loved ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, I don't care whether you apply or not, may the God of heaven orchestrate favor to your life. Every businessman here, every businesswoman, I command it to work for you. Help them. I command it. Ah, no, no, no. I have that anointing. Oh, that one God gave me. I release it for you. Let it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. The power of performance. May the God I serve make it work for you. Access to men you do not know. Access to their resources. Access to favor from them. As you sleep in the night, may the God that I serve show you secrets in your dream. That you will wake up jumping and smiling. You will wake up rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ. honor that God has placed by grace upon this house. I pray you are part of what God is doing and there's no reason why you should not partake of it. You have honored me. You have honored God. I compel that anyone that looks at your eyes, except you don't have eyes, but that they can look at your eyes. I compel favor from them to you. <laughs> Bible says Esther obtained favor from anyone who saw her. Not talk to her. They just see you and rise up to help you. May the God that I serve make it happen for you. Lift your hands and give Jesus. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you